Welcome to Lecture 11, Multiple Form Applications. The objectives of this lecture are basically calling one form from another form, and there are two um, methods that we're going to use, and one is to open multiple forms, and we'll, I'll explain some of the issues involved there, and the second one will be to create a parameter list and to pass it to another form. And later, in the next chapter, we're actually going to use that method in, in terms of a form calling a report which is very similar. So basically, uh, let's say we have form A and it's calling form B. So we have three different built-ins which we can make use of. Um, this is probably going to happen you know, on a when button press trigger. And um, each of these three different options has uh, a very different state. So we have to take that into consideration. If we use open form, open form opens form B. And what will happen is, remember, this is form A calling form B. So form A will remain active and accessible, and you can go back and forth between the two forms. If you use call form, then call form will open form B as a modal form. And a modal form, what that means is that it's, um, you have to interface with that form and leave it in order to go back. So you can see form A, but you can't, you can't access it until you're finished with form B. It's kind of like a dialogue window. Uh, so you have to decide when you're designing your form how it is that you know you want to present the different forms to your user or really what makes the most sense and then uh, finally with new form if you use new form to open form B what will happen is actually form A will close and form B will open so uh, you have to decide when that's when it's time for you to do that um, and there are a lot of times where you do want it do that so you don't have a whole bunch of windows open at the same time. Just a little point on open form. If you're using open form to launch a new form when you've not committed data in the first form, you must activate a new session, a new database session. Otherwise, you get an error about the uncommitted data. Now, the way you can do this is with the following parameters. Now, if you go into the Help menu and on Oracle uh, Forms Builder and you call up Oracle uh, open form, you'll see all the different parameters. Now this is true for all the built-ins. And what you'll see is um, there'll be a lot of different ways you can call uh, open form. You, you don't have to pass these different parameters and you can pass a few and not all of them. It goes through the whole thing. So even though activate and session are actually default, it's important that you emphasize them in this case. And this would be a case, let's say you had a situation where uh, you're entering data for the student, and then he enters a, um, the, the user is entering new student information. He enters a zip code, which is not in the database, and you tell him that it's not in the database. So what you could do is you could launch a zip code form, and uh, a zip code update form or insert form, where he would insert that information, and you could actually carry um, by either using the parameter method or the global variable method, which we're about to cover. You could carry the value of that zip code into the new form, but you'd have a problem because the, um, the updated or the, the data that you were inserting for the student record would have uncommitted changes in it. So if you try to go over there into the new form, and if it's in the same database session, you won't be able to commit the data. So a way around that is by using these parameters with open form. That's a good idea to, to keep this in mind. So now uh, this is one of our um, two methods of passing values from one form to another. And that is a global variable. And the global variable is self-declared in PLSQL with a colon global.name notation. And what this does is it's self-declared. So you don't actually have to put it in the declarative block of the PLSQL block. You just put it right in the code. As soon as you do that, you've created it. So it's pretty easy to code, but in Windows especially, it actually is a big memory hog, and so it's not always advisable. But in certain small applications, it may be the easiest way for you to handle that. And then what happens is once you've initiated this global variable, it is now available to all the forms within this application. So that can be useful. Now, another way is that you can create a parameter list. Now, 
the parameter list is a list of a number of parameters, and they're all contained in one parameter list. So what you have to do is create the list and then add parameters to the list, and then you open the form and pass the parameter list. And the parameters are only then available to the form being called. So um, that's a tighter integration, and it's a better use of memory. It's a little more complex, though. So here's some of the code involved in that. Uh, and remember, this is very similar to running an Oracle report that needs parameters from the form, which we'll cover in the next chapter. So first you create the parameter list, and um, basically you, you create like a, a parameter list ID, uh, and that's being assigned to the variable here. So create parameter list gives parameter list of that name, and it gives it an ID. And now that we have the ID, the, for VP1, uh, now we can add values to it. So now when I add a parameter to uh, the ID VP1, and the parameter is P underscore 1, it's a text parameter, and the value is what I have there in V value. Um, now, if you want to call the form and make a use of the parameter list, you would make use of call form using this notation. And since we have the um, VPL is the parameter list ID, and then it's important that we're going to have to use some of these other parameters as well, and we're just going to go with the default values, no hide, no replace, no query only. And uh, what's very important, though, is when you call form 1, form 1 must have all the parameters that are contained in that parameter list. And so what you'll see is um, this is in the object navigator, and it has, uh, this is where you would create the parameters. And you can see the parameters have very few properties. They pretty much just have a data type and an initial value, an initial value being in, before a code uh, in a trigger has assigned a value to it. So what happens is you may use that uh, parameter in some other triggers to restrict data or uh, in any number of ways. So that uh, basically wraps up the components um, of a multiple form. And so what you'll see in the demonstration are the ways to open multiple forms and a way to create a uh, parameter list and pass it to a form. And then we'll proceed with our assignment. And the assignment is pretty much the same as what you've had up to this point. We'll go through the... Uh, text, uh, do the labs, um, et cetera, et cetera, and then you're ready to go on to chapter 12.